Thank you for joining us for another segment of Credit Matters TV. My name is David Tesher, and I'm a managing director in the Corporate Ratings Group. Joining me today is Scott Sprinzing, a managing director in the Commodities Group. Today, Scott will articulate some of the key themes highlighted in our recently published commentary titled, The Potential Risk of China's Large and Growing Presence in Commodities Markets. The commentary seeks to address the implications of potential slowdown in China's economic growth, as defined by GDP, could pose to global commodity producers. With that, let's just jump into the questions. What effectively could slow down China at this point? Okay, well, China is already slowing down. Uh, it's, it's a deliberate policy on the part of the government uh, to try to address you know, what had been an overheated situation. So th there are uh, efforts underway to rein in uh, growth already, but uh, that's already baked into our, our base case as, as we think about the sovereign rating of China and sectors that are heavily dependent on on, on China. Uh, we, we, we've already taken account then of an expectation of uh, considerably lower economic growth than we saw, for example, late last year. But uh, the thrust of our uh, research uh, was to try to identify uh, worst case scenarios, uh, or at least harsher scenarios than are encapsulated in the base case. Now, one of which would be that policymakers in China, uh, in effect, stumble and impose uh, too harsh uh, restrictions on, on growth, uh, you know, causing an overreaction with uh, lower than anticipated growth. Another scenario would, would be if the asset quality problems of banks come to the fore. There was a, a substantial expansion of, of credit as a result of stimulus measures in, in 2009 and 2010. So uh, you know, to some extent, the banks uh, within China are, are loaded with you know, what uh, certainly were lower quality loans. And uh, our, our best guess is that that's a situation that, that can be managed. Uh, but in our report, we, we do point to the possibility that uh, perhaps those uh, quality, uh, poor quality loans, uh, you know, would 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 cause a significant credit tightening, with with a resulting deceleration of growth. And you you talked about base case. Are we at S and P expecting a slowdown in China? If I could ask you to qualify. Well, we are, but a, a, a modest one, a fairly benign one. Uh, GDP growth in China last year reached 10.3%, uh, which wasn't even a record for, for China, although you know, it was a multiple of what we saw in, in the developed uh, countries. Uh, we're expecting that that'll cool to something on the order of 8 to 9% this year, you know, which is still an enviable rate by uh, world standards. What we're not expecting is, is something more dire. So, you know, in effect, the research we did was uh, on the order of a, a risk to the forecast. What if, what if things are worse, even though that's not what, uh, what we're anticipating? How would you describe China's influence on the global commodity markets? Okay, it would, it would be hard to overstate just what that influence has been in recent years. You know, as I mentioned, uh, growth of the Chinese economy has, has been extremely uh, robust for a number of years. But uh, during the recession of, of 2008, 2009, the, the contrast with uh, the emerged uh, world, the developed world, you know, was quite uh, stark in that there was negative growth in some of the major economies, you know, whereas China continued to experience rapid growth. and. And so, for example, in, in 2010, growth in consumer spending was almost 20 percent in China. And uh, you know, the effect that that's had has been uh, felt directly in pricing, uh, where even with the Western economies still experiencing just anemic economic growth, uh, prices earlier this year were at record or near record levels across the commodities. And it, it's also 
uh, made for a real race to uh, try to accommodate Chinese requirements, that is, on the part of commodities producers. And it's also set off uh, something of, a, of an M&A uh, frenzy in, in some sectors where the value of assets has, has been bid up as Chinese companies have uh, you know, sought to expand offshore and also as, as other uh, companies have you know, tried to position themselves to, to better serve the Chinese market. With respect to the commentary, Scott, how did we pick, how did you decide which commodities we were going to address in the actual published commentary we just came out with? The commentary addresses what, what in effect is a sampling of commodities, although they, they also happen to be among the more important of the commodities. But we, we looked at two base metals, copper and aluminum. Uh, we, we looked at, at steel and two commodities closely related to steel, iron ore and coking coal. We, we looked at crude oil, which is the largest commodity overall uh, in terms of its monetary value. And then finally, we, we looked at a, a, an agricultural commodity, soybeans. So you know, each, each is somewhat different, and we, we thought it would be interesting to consider the similarities, but also the differences. Please elaborate on how the role of China specifically plays with respect to the commodities you just mentioned, how you know, their significance varies. Well, the, the, the clearest difference is in the uh, extent to which China is, is self-sufficient. Uh, and so, you know, just looking at the steel and steel-related commodities, for example, uh, China's fairly well balanced in, in terms of steel consumption versus production. And growing internal steel capacity was a priority from the early days of the industrial revolution within China uh, to, to the present. Uh, so although uh, China is among the largest steel consumers, they, they pretty well meet their own requirements. And in fact, they've uh, been a major exporter. They, they were the largest exporter in, in the steel market last year. But on the other hand, uh, the bulk of production capacity in uh, China and the steel sector is of the integrated type. Uh, they, they mostly employ the integrated technology that uses iron ore as a source for iron and also uh, makes use of coking coal as a raw material. And those are not commodities where China is anywhere near self-sufficient. So given the growth in the Chinese steel sector, China has become the largest importer of those commodities, and it, it, it really is the major customer for any of the, the rated producers of those, those commodities. You know, you speak about China's usage on all these various commodities that we've looked at. Question to you is that how far can prices fall if there is an economic slowdown in China with respect to the commodities that you mentioned? Well, of, of course, it would depend on the nature of the decline in China and the extent of it and also what was going on elsewhere in the world. Uh, as part of our research, we didn't construct a specific model to predict what could happen to prices because you know, to some extent that, that seems like a, 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 a spurious exercise given all the linkages that exist between the Chinese economy and the world economy. Uh, but you know, having said all that, we, we think that I if you imagine a severe downturn in China, given the role that it has played in these markets, that you know, one, one would have to look to record low uh, prices across these commodities. You know, certainly the lows of this past recession uh, might be tested. Uh, in, in most of the commodities, we tend to think in terms of a a, a cost curve approach where once a certain portion of the world industry is underwater, you know, we would expect capacity to be shattered and, and prices to then reach bottom and start to recover. And in, in, in oil, uh, it, it, it's, it's more complicated since there's so much uh, capacity, for example, that, that's controlled by, by OPEC. But again, across the board, you know, we, we would think that 
the lows of uh, you know, late 2008, early 2009 are, are probably a good starting point in, 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 in trying to uh, posit where, where, where things could go in, in that type of environment. Thank you, Scott. There are definitely many variables that can impact the price of the commodities that we've discussed, and clearly an economic slowdown in China could effectively affect prices. So with that, thank you for joining us. Appreciate your comments. Thank you. We'd like to see you again for another segment of Credit Matters TV. Thank you for tuning in. My name is David Tesher.